Hello. Hey there, I'm just trying to figure out my camera's not working. Hello? Probably because you don't have your camera on. <laughs> How's that for an answer? It's horrible. Horrible answer? <laughs> <laughs> Doing 85 Zooms a day. <laughs> I think my Zoom broke. I know, right? Uh, yeah, your Zoom broke. Your Zoom broke. <laughs> you broke your Zoom. <laughs> Cheers, Rick. Howdy. Oh, you poor guy, you're stuck in your office. Not a bad thing. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I am here just in backup in case you need something pulled up to share a screen uh, or you have a question. Okay. Just hanging out in the background. Do you want me to take attendance for you? Um, I'm going to have them. Uh, Post the uh, post their name to the chat, and um, I get a printout of that at the end. Okay. Okay. So if you guys want to do that, just go into the chat feature. It should be along the bottom. If you run your mouse, it should end up um, opening up, and you can end up uh, opening up a chat window. And just type in your 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 name. There we go. Should be able to hear the audio. You got to connect to the audio. Um, you got it now? Camera on. Got it. Hello. <laughs> Who's there? I don't even know. Once again, for those of you who are just joining, uh, go into the chat feature, which you should be able to see on the bottom. Uh, if you mouse over um, and enter your, your name so that I know that, 
that you're here. <laughs> That's how mm -hmm. we're going to work the, the attendance. There we go. Did you get Rikia Algaheim? I'm sorry, sorry, I had to make sure. I'm sorry, I had to make sure. Did you get my name? I wrote it down if I did it correctly into the okay. chat room. What is, what is your name? Because I'm showing up as iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Rakia Algaheim. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I had to make sure. Amber, you made it on. I did. I couldn't find the Zoom thing through the, um, through my email. Mm. I, I wonder if I maybe deleted the email on accident. You saw it was my name. You probably deleted it. Like, oh, I don't want to hear anything from that guy. <laughs> Too much honesty. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know what else was there. <laughs> I have <laughs> You're adorable. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> On my phone, I only see one person. <laughs> There's a way to change that. I oh, can't remember there? what it is on the phone, but, but there is a way. Oh, okay. I see more people now. Once again, for those joining, um, if you haven't already done so, go to the chat feature and just type in your name into chat, just so I know that, that you're here. What you also may wanna do is mute yourself. Uh, I believe if you go to the left-hand side at the bottom, you'll end up seeing a mute. And that way then all the background noise will go away. Looks like a lot of you have done this before. Hello. 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 Ja, ik weet het.
Okay, now I can hear. Okay. Hey everyone. Hello there. Hi. Hello. Go ahead, say hi. Go ahead. <sighs> say hi. <laughs> now you're gonna be shy? Oh, sure. When is he a shy guy? Right? <laughs> he, he was just talking up a storm. I go, you wanna say hi? He said, yeah. <laughs> What's his name, Amber? <laughs> Cody. Cody, Cody, look at all these people looking back at you. Okay. <laughs> look at all the people staring at you. Can you say hi? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're not going to say hi, you have to go back and sit down and play, okay? Oh, all right, let me go ahead and get, and get started and um, go to... Uh, PowerPoint presentation. Can you all see that okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, not everybody. All right. So this is um, kind of, uh, I, I had sent out a bunch of handouts and you all should have had them. Uh, there should have been a student information sheet. Some of you have already completed that and sent it back. Um, if you can't complete it um, electronically, go ahead and complete the information. And then um, just, you can either just snap a picture of it, or if you can scan it in, go ahead and get that back to me. Uh, there's also a Castle Branch background check form that you'll need to complete. I don't need that information back. However, um, you will want to have that uh, uh, completed, um, and I, I believe later on in the presentation, I, there, there, there'll be a deadline there as far as when that is due. Uh, the information uh, doesn't come back to me, it comes back to the college, and um, uh, our associate dean will um, review that if there's any issues related to the criminal background check. I also sent you a schedule of classes so you know which classes to register for. Registration has begun, so um, you can go ahead and uh, register for classes for fall. Uh, there's a student liability form that you'll need to complete again and sign and uh, get that back to me in some, in some fashion. I also included a copy of the student handbook, uh, which we will go over extensively once the program starts, but just to kind of give you some idea on what the background is. And then again, if I haven't already said this, I'll say it about a thousand times today. Uh, let me know that you're here by typing your name into the chat feature. What we kind of gonna go through is just some introductions, a little bit of um, stuff as far as some of the current students, if we have them on, we kind of give an idea. Uh, we'll watch a short video, not to life and breath one, but I found a little bit better one. Hopefully we can get the technology to work there. Um, and then um, just talk about some questions about the program and about respiratory therapy as a general. And then where do we go from here? Could you do, do me a favor if you haven't already, hit the mute button on your um, thing so we can uh, not get a lot of the background noise. Uh, we are accredited through an organization called the Committee on Accreditation for Restoration Care, COARC. 
Um, <laughs> they were scheduled to come for a site visit this fall, I mean, uh, uh, back in April, uh, which obviously got canceled because of all of the uh, travel restrictions and whatnot. So we're not sure at what point we anticipate that they will be here for a site visit this fall. Um, you as new students uh, will be part of that process as far as, as, far as um, um, some, que some questions just related to the program itself. But our current accreditation does run through to 2021 and you must be an accredited program to sit for your board examination. So it's kind of an important thing. My name is Rick Sahabek. I'm the program coordinator. Um, my contact information is there. The email is probably the best way to ever get, to get a hold of me. Um, it's joked that I, um, I answer emails sometimes before you even hit the enter key. So just to let, let, you, let you know, I'm, I'm pretty responsive. Lori, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Lori Niemer. I'm the clinical coordinator for the program and just like Rick, I, I prefer email. We can get those right to our phone. So um, if you do call, we can actually get that on our phone as well at home. But um, I'm glad you guys are all here. Nice to meet you virtually and hopefully get to see you real soon. Amber, you wanna to touch base? I'm Amber Clark, I'm your lab supervisor. Um, I currently work at Extension Macomb as well, so I am working in the field. Um, I am available for tutorings. Again, email is the most preferable way to contact me to set that up. Um, I'm usually pretty flexible with those and I'm uh, available to help wherever I need. Um, I'm usually there in the fall on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then in the um, winter it changes. But yeah, if you ever need anything, you know, open door policy, just let us know or let me know and I'll help you however I can. Sounds good. A couple of other folks that are important to the process. We have two co-medical directors, Dr. Tankenau and Dr. Obeid. Uh, they are both out of Ascension um, Warren. I know there's a longer name than that, but um, those, those, those folks are, um, giving us guidance and we actually do have the opportunity, um, at least in the past we have, um, of uh, spending a day in their office so you know what life is like um, related to medical directors. Uh, Dr. Ritzenhein is our provost. Um, Dr. Mer Merigian Nara is our uh, Dean of Health and Public Services and I'm gonna let Andrea introduce herself. She is our Associate Dean that as a direct reports for all of us. Andrea? Well, hi everybody. Um, I'm up here in the corner, wherever where you see me on your screen. I've been here for about a year at Macomb Community College. I am um, thrilled daily by all of your instructors and Amber, um, all the assistants, you, that you are in an amazing, an amazing program. And the secret on the street, which I don't think it's going to be a secret anymore because I tell everybody, but although I'm a nurse by trade, um, I respiratory program is my favorite. There's, um, these are probably the smartest people in the entire world because they are your, you're going to learn from them how to provide airways. And I'm just fascinated by the intelligence behind this, this area. So I cannot wait to see you guys grow and learn and flourish and see your confidence bloom. So I cannot wait um, to see you. And I live, um, when I'm not here at home, locked down like you guys are, I'm up on the second floor at the end of the hallway and the e-building. So if you ever need anything, um, I am more than happy to talk with you. Also, um, I kind of sneak around the classrooms and things like that and kind of snoop because I'm nosy and want to see if I can learn anything new. So anything you need, just let me know and um, I'd be happy to and talk with you and learn from you. So good luck in the program and uh, we'll see you all real soon. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I don't know if any of our officers, I know some of them were planning on being on, but I think they ran into some scheduling issues. Um, but we have class officers that we do um, elect, you will elect. Um, I am the treasurer, but um, the president, vice president, secretary are all chosen by you. 
Um, so if anyone wants to take a leadership role, that is certainly something that is there. We do a lot of fundraisers to try and raise money to offset costs that are associated with the program. So you will end up seeing some information related to that. Are any of the officers on by chance? I'm here, Rick. Oh, okay, Shay. You want to make any comments about what your experience has been like in the program? Uh, so I just want to let you guys know, like, once you get in the program, like, you're no longer in a competition with anybody. Pretty much everybody is going to be your friend. It's going to be the reason why you make it through the program. Uh, come in with a good attitude. You definitely got to work hard. This is not an easy program. Um, if you ever feel like you need anything, my name is Shay. You can reach out to me. Um, but other than that, it's going to be going to be a tough program, guys, but it's definitely going to be worth it at the end. Thank you, Shay. All right. Um, instead of doing this life and breath video, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a different video if I could manage that here. Where are you? Can everybody see that screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. No sound. Is there no sound? No. Did I hear there's no sound? No sound. Okay. This is, this is, let me try this again. I don't know that I share computer sound. Let's try this. Sound now? No, no, okay, no. What, what I what I, what I will do is I'll send you out that link because it is a it's a nice little video that is about five minutes long. It's put together by our um, uh, organization, our professional or, or organization, and it's called um, um, I am a respiratory therapist. So kind of get an idea of of what the field is. Up until the origin of COVID, um, I used to. Respiratory therapists were the um, hospital's best kept secret because nobody knew who we were or what we did. However, if you walk into any intensive care unit, there's a nurse, there's a doctor, and there's a respiratory therapist. So we're kind of central to what goes on. But like I said, since since, since the onset of COVID, it's kind of a little bit of a different story. Can you guys all see the PowerPoint now? Back with that. Okay, good. A little bit about the arts and sciences. Uh, what skills do you need? You passed a micro and a and Those are the kind of skills that you're going to need. A lot of science skills, a lot of reading comprehension skills. Some of the reading is a little bit technical, so we'll walk through that as we go through the program. And there are some math skills. I don't want you to think that this is a program that does not have any math involved. It's you know, the side joke was always respiratory has no math. That's not true. There is, but the most uh, complex thing you would ever have to do is rearrange an equation and, and do those, those sorts of things. So one of the courses that we'll talk about actually will help you prepare for this. If you don't have a good background, there are some math courses you can use, but I don't think you really end up necessarily needing to take those. Um, the, we'll talk about reading comp, com, com, comprehension and some of the things the college does have available. Uh, if you have med term, that's a great background, but it's not necessarily something that you have to take, obviously, um, along with anything else, you've got enough to, uh, not enough on your plate. For the assistance degrees, uh, you need not only some, um, the respiratory therapy core courses, which add up to about 51 credits, you also have some arts and sciences that you have to get out of the way. Hopefully, a lot of you already have had those out of the way. Like I said, the A and P and micro, so group two is already taken care of. It's some, from some of the other ones, and we give, we can give you some recommendations. Our courses, our 51 credits, are not only just um, or, um, the didactic lecture style courses. There's also some laboratory courses, and then when we start into the summer, we'll actually go through 
medical courses, and we'll walk through that. So the prereqs, again, were the human anatomy and physiology, and then the pathogenic mic microbiology is the recommended of the two, although you can also take bio one, uh, 2400, which is a little more difficult and also requires prereq, which no one likes to have extra classes. So the three other groups that you have to have courses with, one is in the, you have to have an, the English, either 1180 or 1210. You need to have something from a, um, uh, some uh, humane, also some social science. The recommendation we have is uh, for group three, do intro to psych. And then also um, group four, the humanities, um, the ethics is a good course, as well as the comparative re religions. Not sure to stand, there's the number for following a, or contacting the academic advisors. I believe they do still, even though the college is closed, have the ability to do some remote investigation and um, uh, getting back in touch with you as far as what courses may or may not tra have transferred, et cetera. And by the way, the, I, I, I make this comment frequently throughout the program. Make sure you do have a good handle on what you've got covered. There's nothing worse than coming to the final semester and realizing that you may not have something com com completed in the process. So let's we'll talk a little bit about the career that you solve into. I, th I find that it's much more than just going for a job. It is some, something that becomes integral to things you do. We do make a difference. That is definitely tr uh, true. There's a whole process that we go through from everything that is involved as far as gathering information, doing a patient interview, interpreting that data that we, that we collect, some sort of a care plan, performing that, that therapy involved with the care reevaluating and revising as needed and in docu documentation. You will become very skilled at being able to identify signs and symptoms of somebody who's having difficulty breathing or having some sort of a problem. Obviously, smoking is a big component of what causes people to present to us, but the, there's also other things like occupational and just heredity that comes into uh, the process. We go through a, a good portion of your first semester in 1085 is on how to do a basic assessment of a patient, including things like listening to the lungs and doing other kind of bedside stuff. Some diagnostics that we'll get through, especially in the second semester. Um, yes, we do draw blood for arterial blood uh, sampling and analysis. So um, just recognize that. A lot of other diagnostic studies that we'll end up having as a component of the program. Then the key part comes. Now that I got you know, what do I, a large uh, aspect of critical thinking that has to go on because you're responsible obviously for the, for the patient's care. There's multiple procedures that we'll do, uh, both from a conservative care standpoint, just something simply like uh, delivering oxygen, delivering aerosol med med medication, Education is a component as far as patients throughout the entire process. And then also there's critical care where we're actually managing the life support systems. Um, we're the who know what knob to turn and how far to turn it. So uh, we're also right at the cutting edge. Um, I always like to say CPR, um, but um, we're, we're there where all the action is at. What kind of patients do we do? We're there from the first breath to the last breath. Um, the, one of the last organ systems to develop in uh, infants is, um, are the lungs. So premature babies will need our care, as well as pediatric patients and patients with underlying respiratory disease, uh, trauma patients, post-op patients, and many, many others involved. The vast majority of therapists in the hospital However, there's lots of chance to branch out into doing home care, to doing a, a post um, a, a care, um, and then obviously people like me who are going into education at some point along the line, that there's an opportunity there. Great job, great salary. 
definite job security. There is, as we'll talk about, and, uh, pulmonary diseases are not going away. Um, it is definitely an opportunity to help others. It's where you get the definite um, feeling that you've done a good job at a, at a given point in time. Very re re rewarding career. For respiratory therapist, you complete an associate's degree program like we have that is credentialed. Uh, we go through, it's a five semester program and we'll talk about what, what goes on with them. You'll then sit for two board exams what the ultimate goal becoming the RRT credential. Um, the CRT exam is part of the uh, process and that is the credential that is necessary to license in the state of Michigan. Once we're done, you can go ahead and get some additional cred credentials and there's a whole slew of those that you can get. Anything from a neonatal pediatric specialist to some diagnostics, to asthma education, to um, sleep stuff. We are affiliated with a couple of um, online universities, and we're trying to score more of, of affiliations with them so that they will take the credits that you gain here, and you can apply them to an online um, baccalaureate degree. There are also master programs which are starting to become um, uh, available, and those are for a practice um, similar to what you may see with a physician assistant or nurse practice practitioner. And then you can also branch off into other areas, as I mentioned, like education or clinical specialization. Job market, um, <laughs> always gonna be there. Um, as it stands right, right now, they're expected to grow again in the process. If you take a look at the percent growth, this is uh, from the state of Michigan, 37% growth pro projected. It's so just not going away. The reasons is that of all the the top ten uh, causes of death in in the in the U.S. Um, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is uh, recently surpassed stroke and is now the number three cause of death after cancer and cardiovascular heart disease. Um, so we're there, and we know that the smoking is a big component of that. And in addition. 10 causes of death. Um, COPD is two, diabetes being the other one is on the increase, not on the decrease. So we'll be there. This is a, from some folks out of Oakwood uh, showing that there is there. Salaries obviously with edu education degree and the years of experience. Um, there's uh, also, obviously, it's a 24-7 um, job, so there's shift and weekend differential that can raise your repay beyond what the base pay is, and obviously those who are um, managers and supervisors make more. This is a, some, some numbers I, I downloaded uh, that are related to 2019. You can see the uh, average uh, or the pay. This is very regionally um, certain areas have a whole lot um, higher pay than the other parts of the United States, but you can see the uh, job outlook is um, very, very good. What can we expect? As Shay mentioned, it's a lot of hard work. Um, both Lori and I and Amber kind of have the general attitude. My motto is nobody graduates this program, we can take care of it. So um, I have a, high, a very high bar that. Um, that I were that I require folks. Um, you will get its degree, you will get a certificate of completion, then you can go ahead and get those credentials, those credentials, the CRT and RT credentials, national credentials. Once you pass your board exams, you can go and work anywhere in the United States just as long as you get a license. And 49 of the 50 states are in in states, the only option is Alaska. So let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. These are the three courses you'll be registering for for the fall. Uh, 1050 is uh, respiratory anatomy and physiology. You took anatomy and physiology and I know that you probably had about a week, maybe half on the cardiopulmonary system. We spend 16 weeks. So you can imagine we're going a whole lot deeper. Uh, 
1960 is called physiochemical basis of respiratory therapy. Basically what it is, is it's a, we teach you some math, some chemistry and some physics, but we tie it to respiratory therapy as far as how it's used in our world. We start out very, very simple. Uh, for those of you who have math course in quite a long time, don't worry, we'll, we'll ease you into this. 1085 is procedures one, both lab and lecture. And that is um, something where we go through initial, um, uh, some, some background as far as uh, what a respiratory therapist does, but also then taking into account some things like basic assessment and uh, some introduction to some of the uh, procedures involved. I will tell you that we have managed to bundle the books and uh, not only are the books um, available as bundle, they're also within that bundle um, uh, e-books for all of the uh, hardcover texts that we end up having. Uh, the biggest expense in books is going to be semester, but the good news is those books are the rest of the program. So each course that you'll take from there on out will have some component of those books involved. Um, there are some other expenses that are there. We encourage uh, going to conferences if they have conferences again. Uh, there are some professional membership uh, joining the national thing. It's not a, I think it's $25, not like it's a huge amount. You're responsible for your own transport and any other clinical expenses that are there. Um, some board exam prep that we do, graduation. There's some associated costs for graduation, cap and gown, that kind of stuff. And then there's, uh, we do um, usually host a board exam prep post-graduation college and then there's obviously the cost for the board examination fees so we will give you more idea of what those are as we go along remain or, or maintain a grade of c or better in all respiratory um, courses as well as all other courses that that you take if you don't get at least the c um, that uh, you will need to retake that class and courses are only offered once a year to give you a heads up on that. We could talk more about that as, as, as we get into it. Second semester, winter semester uh, has procedures too. So now we're gonna learn more various procedures that are restricted their form. There's the pulmonary pathology. So we learned about the anamine physiology, what happens when something goes wrong. Um, and then two eight-week courses, one of which is pharmacology and the other one of which is the Neopeds survey class. And those, that this, the Neo Neopeds is the second eight weeks and pharm is the first eight weeks. Then comes the summer. And during the summer, we end up having, um, it's usually May through July, um, but it's, it's an eight week where we end up having some of it as a respiratory um, lab that is handled on, on, on campus. And then the other 32 hours are done as your first clinical exposure into uh, local hospitals. Um, there will be a criminal background check again that you're gonna take and the deadline on that is July 24th, but you'll need to have that completed. And that's at Castle Bell that I sent out to you. They'll actually get another criminal background check once you complete the program and apply for your license. Uh, part of the Castle Branch uh, back, uh, handout talks about a drug screen. You don't need to get it now. You'll get that next, next April prior to starting. Uh, you are responsible for your own clinical, uh, clinical sites. Some of them do have parking and they'll get you um, the cost of parking involved there, um, that depends on, on the site. You'll also, for your uniform and supplies, our scrub color is a royal scrub color and you will need a lab coat, more on that later. Uh, but you need some other things like a stethoscope and a calculator and we'll go through how to look for when purchasing the stethoscope. Health and liability insurance. Um, you will have a health history that's done. Again, this isn't until next April. Uh, the only thing I do comment on is that 
the hepatitis B vaccine is strongly recommended, and that's a three, um, three immunization shot that you end up having. So you can start that at any point in time. Uh, we do work with blood, and the, the potential for contracting hepatitis B is, is higher than in most healthcare professions. So I strongly, strongly admit it or re recommend it, I should say. We will do CPR certification of our uh, second semester RSPT 1115. Um, so you'll have that before you get to the rotation. These are some of our clinical sites. We're always looking for additional sites to utilize, um, but you take through of five of these at some point along the line. Some of them specialize in pediatric and neonatal. So um, you may, you will go to one of these five as one of the uh, five um, eight week rotations that, that you end up doing. Many of the institutions will look to hire students as technicians um, uh, to work afternoons and weekends after you've taken your summer ro 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 rotation. So there's good news on that one. The, they will allow you to work as a respiratory therapist during the year. Just don't know, nothing is worse than having somebody work too many hours and then they don't, aren't successful at school. And the semester is finally over. Fall semester then. 2250 and 2260 are two more eight week clinical rotations, 20 hours a week. Um, there's also been an advanced mechanical ventilation lecture in the lab, as well as an acid basis and advanced diagnostics course. There are then uh, the final semester, two more eight week clinical rot rotations. And uh, then there's an advanced concept which is kind of a nice course because if something is brand new, never been seen before, uh, we can end up covering, covering that before you graduate. We also do a certification and registry review so that the two exams you do, this course basically all we do is take exams. We take exams, talk about how to take it, talk about how to uh, logically think through what, what the question is, is asking you and um, I will tell you that our board successes uh, on the licensing exam, it's about 98, 99% first time pass rate. On the second exam, which is a clinical simulation exam, it's um, uh, not, as, not as high as that. It's about 75, 80% first time pass rate. But this is on an exam that has a national uh, average of about 55%. So we're well above the national average. And that's the exam I was talking about. And then we do offer a review seminar that is optional once you complete the program. Our goal is to not only have you pass the licensing exam, which is the CRT, um, it's the therapist multiple choice exam. And there's two papers that you can get. The lower cut score gets you the L to pass the C. However, you have to pass it. It's a higher cut score to continue on to the second exam which is the clinical sim exam. Once you pass that, you can then are given registered respiratory therapist credential, which is what every um, department, the, the CRT is a, is a stepping stone, but the RRT is. Uh, as uh, Shay said, the, not something where we wanna end up having um, everybody competitive. This is something that everyone will be able to be successful at and um, working out uh, some kind of a process where you're not having a large work demand. Uh, we recommend no more than 20 hours. Um, I will tell you that people have gone through the program working full time, but it's very, very difficult or makes it more difficult, I should say. You do need some good support system at, at, at home, um, some good study habits. Everything you did that made you successful in um, A and P and micro goes right along here. So being an active learner, asking questions, um, and being responsible for your own learning and seeking help for sure. Amber and uh, Lori and I are all have an open door policy where you can 
contact us any point in time. Uh, and being willing to help others. Like I said, this, this is not com competitive in that sense. What resources are available? Experienced, I have over 42 years of experience as a respiratory therapist. Um, Lori has over 15, Amber has over 10. So we all have a long experience. Um, again, and it is an accredited program. I will tell you it is the longest program in the state of Michigan. We weren't the first one, but uh, that, uh, are the longest current uh, program in the state. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art facility. Our lab is um, a rival by none. I think we're we're right up there. We have great directors, and as you saw, being on the on the call here, we have great administrative support. We have an advisory board that meets twice per year to be able to give us guidance as far as what is what is going on within the program. The advisory board is made up of um, all of our clinical affiliates, representatives from them, as well as some community members. And there are some computer um, lab that is, that is available. As I mentioned about the high on our licensing exam, we also have a 95 plus um, employment rate. If you are not employed after graduating this, this program, you don't want a job is the bottom line. And I will tell you that I had managers, hiring managers tell me if I got a Macomb grad or I got a, some, a great program, they'll look at the Macomb grad first. One thing that you may not be familiar with or you with are the student success seminars. They're available through the Learning Center. They are free. Did I say that word right? Free. And little things like um, time management and how to take us and stress management. They do a great job. They're about an hour in length and they're, I strongly encourage them. So where do we go from here if I was selected alternate? If you were selected, you, if you haven't already paid $100 deposit, that will lock your seat in. Go ahead and complete that criminal background check from Castle Branch, register for fall classes. There's a Canvas student oriented that you should have completed if you haven't already done the Canvas. Um, get your books come to class on the first day and bring you all the materials that you, that you end up having. If you were accepted, but you decide that you don't want to attend the program, please let, please let us know so we can fill that slot. Registration, as I said, has begun. So if you are, have been accepted into the program, you had to register for the classes. If you are an alternate, I'll talk about that in a half a sec, to be honest with you, I don't know how you register. I believe it's all done through Web Advisor, but um, I'm old. We don't. We did it differently in in, in my day. Classes will begin August 17th. Um, the initial three to four weeks will be online. Um, once that been completed, we'll then um, convert over to hopefully an on-ground. This is still all very fluid. Uh, we completed the last eight weeks of last semester of the um, winter semester online and um, uh, added some new challenges, but I think uh, Lori and I have gotten as far as how we end up needing to do this. And um, we'll, uh, we'll make it a uh, a good experience. Um, after that point, uh, we will be in some on-ground classes. There will be precautions that will be taken, um, and we'll explain those as the time gets closer. If you're, if you're an alternate, um, after orientation, we're going to find out how many slots we still need to complete. We're, we're shooting for 35 slots um, at this point in time it's we're at 25 so there are some open slots and we'll basically just go down the list of uh, those who attended orientation and uh, how you were ranked and we'll go from there the letter that you could receive could be up to including the first day of class we have actually sent out and and uh, secured somebody into the program on the uh, the very day of of uh, class, so 
be aware of that. Job shadowing, um, I wish I could say that it's it's available. Um, right now, most hospitals are in a November. So there's not the ability there, but um, as that changes, if you're interested in job shadowing, I certainly would um, encourage it. You can contact me and get some more. Canvas training is available on uh, macomb.edu. Uh, click on the My Macomb, sign in, click on Canvas, and there's an orientation. I don't it might take an hour if, if that. For more information uh, from different sites, um, the second one there, macomb-rspt.com, is a site is my site. Uh, a lot of information that is available um, for each course is available there. Um, MichiganRC.org is our professional organization at the state level. AARC is our uh, on the national level, and the NBRC is the organization that I boarding so always nice to know these are the co contact information for Lori and I so if you have any questions feel free to drop us a line as she mentioned if you call us and leave us a voicemail that voicemail kicks over to our email so we have a direct access to it and that's really all I had just as a reminder the castle branch needs to be completed by uh, July 24th uh, there's some other requirements there. Kim, uh, you should have uh, received some information on also. Her uh, and I, um, if you can send that information back. And then again, I just want to make the academic advisor that you can um, contact them if you have any questions about the associate's degree. <sighs> now, if you haven't already your name into the uh, the chat feature, please do so that I know that you're, dead, dead, that you're here. Let me just kind of scroll back and see if there's any questions that people might have had. Was a register for classes for fall a blanket statement? Um, again, if you are have been accepted into the program, you are more than welcome to register. Um, there are multiple sections for each course, so make sure you slide into one of them at the same time. Um, I'm not sure how to activate the video also. Um, I have recorded this and I can send out um, the, the, the once it processes also. You have to register for all the courses. They're all co-requisites. So yes, there are three courses, five, 50, and 50. Um, You do need to have health insurance by the time the program starts clinical road, 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 road. Our clinical is required to have health insurance. Something should happen when you're at the, uh, at the, at the clinical site. Vaccines are not dealt with until um, you begin clinical, so that's not until next, next April. Um, there are actually two winter semesters. I don't know why that question, question came up there. The one winter semester will be, is a second semester. The second winter is the, is the final semester. So there's a total of five that you'll end up having. Somebody have any questions? I know I'm, I, I want to be cognizant of, of, of your time because I know you got better things to do than listen to me. Good, good Lord Almighty, you'll be doing that for, for two years. Um, I'm a vet, so I thought. There are some questions coming up in the chat. Yeah, I'm seeing that. I'm a vet, so I have health care, but I don't have health insurance. As long as you have access to health care is, 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 is what they're looking for. If you're a vet and you have uh, through the VA, um, that should. If you're, do you still have to complete the castle? Answer is no. Uh, once you get the letter of acceptance, we will then give you a deadline as far as when it needs to be done by. When do we need our scrubs by? You don't need your scrubs until the um, summer semester. Um, uh, when we do actually do, do do clinical. We're not one of those programs that require 
the students to have scrubs for the uh, on-ground classes. Um, it's easier because you don't have to decide what, what to wear that day. You can just wear the scrubs, but you're welcome to No, we don't require it. Uh, what can we do with added education? A lot of times, um, any advanced uh, position, a supervisor or education coordinator or anything along that line would require a degree in most, in most inst institutions. What happens when you're on the first day of class? We beat you up, basically. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we'll go over what the program is and we'll uh, walk you through all that is necessary. Um, I didn't get the Canvas thing. Can you explain it, please? Yeah, Canvas online um, learning management system. So all of our uh, coursework, um, I post videos for all lectures. They're all in Canvas. So if you have not in, oriented yourself to Canvas, you will need to do that. Go to mymacomb.edu. Um, and then once you sign on, you'll end up being able to and um, take Canvas. If you have any further questions, drop me a line. If an alternate is chosen the first day of class, will be access books. No, but there are there are all kind of um, options there. The bookstore normally has more books than the, than the um, than we do have students. Starting pay, as you saw, the national average was about thirty dollars an hour. Um, that varies institution to institution. And I can tell you, even within pension, uh, there is there's difference from facility to, to facility. Um, do you have to email proof of health insurance? Um, as, as the time goes on, yes, is, is the process. I don't know the price of books for the fall. I have not seen them. I want to say it's probably somewhere just shy of 500, but that is, but again, those books are throughout the program. So a little bit, a um, little bit nicer there. Um, they're available at the bookstore. Yep, they're also available, I believe, at uh, some of the offsite bookstores that they have. Um, I do, um, on my site, dash rspt.com. I have a link to books used in the program and I provide you with the um, ISBN. So if you wanted to search um, Amazon or um, I, I like to use um, uh, half um, half.com, that's eBay's arm, book arm. Anything else? All right, guys, I'm excited. I don't know about you, but um, this is gonna be a fun, 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 fun time. Uh, thank you for attending. If you have any other questions, drop me an email and I will try to send out a link to that uh, uh, video that we um, uh, couldn't hear the audio on and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.